we got a we got a large group of guys here, six of us. We got a Jim Connors here. He's my tournament partner. We got a couple of guys over here from Bass Pro Dakota and Barrett. They're the fishing leads for Bass Pro in Independence, Missouri. And Dave Taylor's over here on the other side. He's another tournament partner of mine. And the question we have for you. Um, a lot of what you've been showing us is primarily what I would call like power fishing, dirty water, black and blue jigs, alternate a little bit as far as the fall goes. Um, what about clear water, more subtle, maybe finesse type tactics, and what is your uh, take on color, um, and what do you use to make those determinations on when you're going to switch colors, and what are your primary colors? Okay. Uh I got three things I want to say and don't let me forget to answer your question. First of all, I really like the deer heads in the background. That looks a lot like uh, that looks a lot like my living room. You guys that deer hunt, we have a special connection. I mean I just I fish so I can deer hunt. I want you to know that. Uh, the second thing that I want to talk about is the classic. You kind of brought up a point there and I wanted to talk about that and give you guys an idea of my mentality. You know, after after the second day of the classic, you know, I was in fourth place and, and I went home that night and I felt like I felt like I didn't have a chance to win in the area that I was fishing. So I decided that uh, like I do a lot of tournaments, if you notice my finishes, that I was going to go for it. And and like I said, that's I'm, the older I get, the more I'm not scared to go for it. And I decided the third day that I was going to go back to my area, give it an hour, and then I was going to go fishing and try to win the Classic. And sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. So I just wanted to give you you guys that story. That's Whenever you see me fish on the last day, a lot of times, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But every time I'm trying to win the trophy, and I want you guys to know that. Now, to answer your question... Uh, I'm going to give you a perfect example. It happened, uh, I think, in 2010. We were on Beaver Lake, and the water was flooded, and the water was gin, gin clear. I mean, gin clear. I do remember that the water was six, seven, eight foot in the bushes. And, I mean, you could literally pull up to the bush and see all the way to the bottom. And I look around at my competitors, and everybody's flipping, and, and you could see, uh, you would watch them. It would take their bait a long, long time to go to the bottom. They would work it out and things like that. Well, I knew right then that I had an advantage on those guys because I spend a lot of time on Lake Tinkiller, where I live at, flipping clear water. So the last practice day... I put on a one-ounce weight. I mean, I'm just flipping bushes. They're six or seven foot deep. I'm flipping a one-ounce weight, and I'm flipping like a, a smaller uh, creature bait. I would, you know, like a four-inch creature bait. And I would go to, if I'm flipping clear water, if it's early in the morning, I'm still going to flip a black and blue. If it's cloudy, you know, I want, I still probably want a black and blue. You know, anything with any light penetration, I want green pumpkin, uh, watermelon candy or something like that, but it was just that little change of, of going to that ounce weight that made that bait fall really, really quick in that clear water that made those fish bite. You know, after three days, I was leading that event. I did not win that event, but after three days, I was leading it, and it wasn't anybody's fault other than mine that I lost it, but uh, I, I caught a lot of fish that event, but to answer your question, in that really clear water, you probably need to stay with your natural colors. I do like the dark colors under cloudy or early in the morning. Uh, but just upsize your weight. Go to something that gets more of a reaction strike and cover it. That allows you not only to get a reaction strike, but that allows you using the bigger weight to cover a lot more water throughout the day's time. In flipping, it's about putting your bait in front of as many fish as you can. Hope I answered your question. Guys, it's an honor. Honestly, grew up watching you. I mean, it's uh, this is amazing. I could sit here and listen to you guys all night long. Just tell stories. It's fantastic. You're I, not I, have to. <laughs> I will, though. I will. Hey, I, you know, I'll ask you one question, and maybe you'll talk about it right now, or maybe not. But you know, if you had one lure, let, let's just say they gave you a full season of tournaments, and you could only use one lure, which one would you use? 
Well, I'll answer that first, then I'll let, uh, let Roland answer because it's an excellent, excellent question. And we have and, two different answers. And we, I'm sure, have two different answers. Right. Uh, I, I, it w I would pick a spinnerbait. I would pick uh, a, probably a three-eighths ounce. And if that one lure had to be only one color, uh, it would probably be a, a – uh, it would be real hard for me to choose between a fire tiger and a chartreuse in white. I would probably go with, with the fire tiger color. And, uh, and, and that, that would be, a, you know, in uh, the FLW tournaments last year at the tour level, I made the money five out of seven times. And four of those five times – was with a spinnerbait. Right. One was with a jig fishing 30 feet deep on Smith Lake, but mine would be a spinnerbait. Uh, but, but boy, okay. I'd hate to I had to fish it a whole year with one lure. But that would be but, it. Go ahead. Well, now, now, I'm a spinnerbait fisherman. I'd be using spinnerbait. In. But really good spinnerbait my fisherman. primary lure, if I had just one, would be a five-inch Cinco. Now any any, any, any color will work as long as it's that 297 <laughs> green pumpkin. <laughs> great. That, any that's color as long as it's green pumpkin. Two, I hear 297, you. 297, right? And uh, but. It, Dan, this is a tracking sponsor. Is there a little brief look at my at the cover page of my re resume? Um, why company sponsor? That this is what this is where well, this is why Dan's here. You know, I, I I made this slideshow before I asked Dan to be a part of it, and it said, uh, you know, I put why do companies sponsor? And I'm thinking like, what the heck do I know about companies? You know, I'm going to see if I can get an expert in here. So uh, that's what I did. So uh, if uh, Dan can get his mic and camera working, we'll see how this goes. And uh, here he is. Everybody say hello to Mr. Dan Quinn from Rapala. Hey, everybody. Hey, Dave. Good deal. Well, yeah, like Dave said, I manage the pro staff of Rapala. And, um, you know, there's a whole lot I can talk about. And I, I've gathered that a lot of guys here are tournament fishermen, some aspiring to be pros. And um, so I can answer all kinds of questions if you guys have to kind of get you on the right track. and. I can share with you some of the things that I look for when I see resumes or meet people in the field. Um, but like Dave said, I do get a lot of resumes, and um, it is real quick and easy to decide if it's going to be one that I might be interested in contacting to see if we could get something going. Or more more often than not, it's I'm I'm pretty turned off pretty quickly into it. And I thought just sharing some brief ideas and examples of what does turn me off um, might help you get kind of on the right track if that's something you're interested in pursuing. Um, you know, with Rapala, we're a lure company. We're, uh, you know, just in the tackle side of things. And, and as Dave knows, and, you know, most guys that are at Dave's level, the big money deals are going to be in non-endemics, you know, like Frosted Flakes or, um, you know, I'm so excited tonight, Pro Web Live Seminar, my seminar on sight fishing. Everything you need to know to catch sight fish, whether it's in uh, bedding time or other times. So check it out. Now, you have to buy a ticket. It's about 50 bucks, but let me tell you what you get. You get an opportunity to win all kinds of free prizes. I mean, like they're giving away tackle webs, which is a new pedestal base mount that keeps all your stuff organized. Giving away a few of those. Giving away... Quantum Rod and Reel, one of my favorite ones. I mean, this is the one that I use to catch the 30-pound sack. It's got the XO. It's got, you know, the, the new Tour PT rod and sight fishing kits. There's so many things. These are my favorite sight fishing baits of all time that I'm putting together in kits to give away. Trocar hooks that go with it, tungsten weights, both Eagle Claw and Strike King. We're talking top-notch stuff. 
So you may win everything back. This thing is worth way over $50. Plus, you don't have to leave home. You don't have to spend gas money. And you don't have to go buy food or anything like that. You're not away. You're right there in your living room. Hey, you can get buddies to come over, split it up. It's an awesome, awesome thing. So come join me tonight. It's 7 o'clock is pre-show. 8 o'clock starts a seminar at ProWebLive.com. I'm excited about doing this one. All right, now let's talk about, I had a question last night, and this is probably a question that I get a lot when I'm flipping jigs because this is, uh, I mean, this, this is what I want to do. I flip a half ounce jig 100% of the time. I, I cannot flip a quarter ounce. I cannot flip a three-eighths ounce. The only time I go bigger, you know, is if I'm an ounce, ounce and a quarter flipping grass. But what I can do is I can make this jig fall like a quarter ounce or I can make it fall like a half ounce. That's all depending on the trailer that I use. Now, if I want this jig to fall slowly, like if I'm fishing 40 to, you know, around 50 degree water, I'm going to go to a, a big, thick chunk like this. You know, that's just a yum crawl chunk. I'm going to bite some of that off. I know my colors aren't matching, but I picked white so you could see it. You know, I'm just going to thread this on there. You, all, you guys have done this a hundred times. But what this does, the plastic, the, the thickness of the plastic has counteracted, I should say, the weight of the head. So now I'm going down the bank, the wind goes to blowing a little bit, I still have the weight of the half ounce jig to be able to get it in that bush just like I want to. I mean, it does not affect me flipping at all. If I were to flip a quarter ounce, I would be in top of the bush, over the back of the boat, in somebody's yard, all that kind of stuff. But this still gives me the weight of a half ounce jig, but it's going to fall slowly or slower than it would if I had a more uh, smaller trailer. Now, that's a slow fall. That's what I want. Now, you probably know where this is going. More streamlined. I want this half ounce to fall fast. You know, I'm not even going to put it on there. Yeah, well, you know, this is just a. Uh, it's just it boils down to it's just less plastic. Right there. You see, I mean, it's just the plastic. It, that jig is going to fall probably 50% faster than, than the big white chunk. So that's how, I, uh, that's how I control the rate of fall. And I've even taken this, you know, these chunks and go to, you know, something even smaller if I want it to fall really fast. Okay. So I think that covers... Uh, the jig and the and the chunks and stuff like that. The only other thing, you know, that I would do, that I actually do a lot, is you see how that jig is really really full. As far as I mean, the skirt. When the water gets warmer, if you feel like, you know, the fish may be pressured some, you know, just pulling that, especially the countdown. I'm just pulling it just enough to feel a little bit bit of vibration. That's why the fluorocarbon is important, so that you can feel it. And, I'm, and as soon as I touch grass, I'm stopping and, and just leaving a little bow in my line, and I'm waiting. That's usually when they pick it up is when it's sitting there on the grass. As soon as you touch that grass, you know, basically the front of your bait is touching it, and your lip prevents you from getting all the bait in there. So the, the back end of it's sticking off that grass, and that's when they pick it up. And it feels like a worm bite or a jig bite. Um, I like high-speed reels for everything. I'm different in that way. A lot of people like low speeds for different things. Um, I just like to have the control, you know, I make really long casts a lot of times, especially with the, the rip and wraps and, um, you know, if, if a bait should foul or something like that, especially in competition or something like that, you want to be able to, you know, crank that thing in a million miles an hour and, and fish, you know, even when it's cold, they still swim you fast on, sometimes. On your so. fall and 10 killer, you'd, you'd make those little backhand flip casts right. or just a 50 or 20 foot cast, but right. extremely Go accurate, throw. many Go of them. And covering a lot of water. Yeah. And you're the that's best right. that there right. is. Covering a lot of water. Covering a lot of yeah, water. That's it. The, the bait situations you might pick out, there's a lot of baits you can use. But one of the things I do, and Roland made a really good point right there, is if you're fishing a crowded lake, 
I would move in close to my fish and try to keep your bait in a spot where it's got a chance to catch a fish a, a really high percentage of the time. One of the things you have on the Potomac, Roland and I fished that river a lot. Roland, of course, fished it back in the early days, being from uh, South Carolina and Maryland. Uh, but, uh, but one of the things uh, on, on that particular body of water there is you've got a lot of grass in it. So if you can find in your grass areas, if you can find the isolated little points and holes and areas in that grass,